Diesel had been punished. He had lied to Fergus about being sent to the smelters for work, and it nearly cost the traction engine to be scrapped. The fat controller was not happy. It seems to me that I do not understand why it seems to be such a problem that you cannot communicate with others properly, Diesel, let alone follow simple orders. I do not appreciate it when Lazar told to my engines, especially when they are destined to be useful. These engines have a life on this island, and if you cannot bring any sense of good behavior, I will have you sent away from here permanently. Do I make myself clear? Yes. Yes. Watch, Diesel. Yes, sir. With meaning, yes, sir. Now. You will be shunted up near the big station until I can trust you again. And if that time comes, I will see that you can stay. There were seldom engines that liked these. His nasty behavior would leave a lasting impression upon everything he touched. Every engine he passed glared right through his radio. Those who had heard about his recent act took offense for Ferguson's sake. They knew how kind he was and how efficiently he worked. And they also knew that Diesel was not one to learn his lesson easily. But despite his cynical and malicious behavior and his devious deeds, he got along quite well with his driver. The two would even go so far as to have meaningful conversations together. And secretly, he was the only one he could trust. Not even the Fat Controller could help Diesel the way his driver did. One day, Diesel was sitting in a siding near the big station for a rest. His driver had just gone off to town for some lunch. He had gotten himself some bagels and enjoyed his small meal. He had just stepped out of the bakery when he saw something across the street. It appeared to be a box. His curiosity got the better of him as he walked over to see what it contained. He looked inside and nearly fell back in surprise. Oh my goodness. Diesel kept to the side, basking in the sun. His driver came back and he noticed that he had something in his hands. Or arms, rather. When he came closer, he could see that in his arms was a baby. Where on earth did you get that? I found uh, him across the road. Poor little tot was in a box. Well, put it back. It doesn't belong to you. His driver was horrified. We are dead, Diesel. I couldn't leave the poor boy. He would have... It... I just couldn't. I bet he's gagging for some milk. The baby then started to coo. He was looking up at Diesel, and his little eyes gleamed. His driver laughed. <laughs> I think he likes you, old boy. Uh, uh. <clears throat> Diesel wasn't impressed, but secretly, he had a warm feeling in his boiler. While he was working around the yard, Diesel could hear the baby giggling in his cap. His driver was tickling and playing with him. Diesel just couldn't understand it. The only character that little gremlin has is that he soils himself. He doesn't even know what anything around him is. How fun is that? 
but he said this to himself. Diesel was on his last job of the day. He had taken his train to Edwards Station and his driver drove him to the siding. He was going to the bathroom with the baby, but he decided to talk to Diesel first. I'll have to take this one in and clean his nappies. Right. Uh, you know, Diesel, my wife and I, uh, we've been trying to have a, a child. So you and the missus have been doing some work, hmm. Well, yeah, uh, we've been trying, but the thing is, uh, is I happen to be infertile. Diesel was surprised. Huh, I'm expecting more from you, driver. I thought you'd be more capable. Well, perhaps it's because I spend all day with you, don't I, you rusty old thing? The driver walked away with his comment, of course, meant in jest. But Diesel took offense. He then got an idea and was about to make a big mistake towards his and his driver's relationship. His driver came back with the infant, ready to set off for home. It was now or never. So I'm the reason you can't have a child, is that it? And he roared his engine into life. The baby wailed in a start. Diesel could only cackle. He meant this in jest too, but looked to see his driver's stone cold face. Diesel only rolled his eyes as the driver gently shushed the baby to calm him down. Diesel's engine started and he set off for the sheds. His driver stepped down from the cab. The baby was asleep now in his arms. He walked to his car when Diesel spoke to him in his oily voice. I hope you and the missus enjoy him now. Diesel's driver stopped and he swung round. He declared in a firm voice while not shouting so as to not wake the baby. Diesel, listen to me and listen very carefully. He may have a strike and a strut every now and then, and not understand the world around him. But that does not mean that he should rot away in some box somewhere. He's a pure and innocent little boy. And seeing as you can't see how others take that, or anything for that matter, I'm not surprised how much trust others have for you. Or how the fat controller even has the sense to keep you. I'll see you tomorrow. He walked away, leaving Diesel baffled. His driver, the one person he trusted, gave him bitterness. Later on, the other engines were talking about Diesel and his mischief. <gasps> For an engine whose devious behavior is more convincing than his actual behavior, James declared. It really is persistent about making the fucking soul have him stay. How he actually convinces him to stay is beyond my smoke box, put in Gordon. Even deceiving an engine the first time should have been enough for him to be sent away, spoke Henry. But five more times? I fancy that. And he had thought his punishment on sending Duke to Wellsworth was cruel, said Douglas. Bear cut in. But surely there's something redeemed about him. Why else do you think he's been continually brought back? Ugh, any explanation be as good as the other in the case of that old tea kettle, rebutted Donald. An engine like him only deserves to be another shunt like the ones that is before him. Just destined to be passed over in the yard somewhere, said James. Almost all the engines agreed. Diesel sat in the shed listening to it all. He was too ashamed and out of view to argue. He felt awful. He could truly see the consequences now of his actions. In his sleep, however, he had a horrible dream.
The next day, he awoke to see someone coming up to start his day off. It was his driver, and only his driver. Where's the little tyke? Oh, I thought he would get in the way of your work. After all, you are the reason I have to have him. No? Diesel said nothing. He was too ashamed. As he shunted his trucks, he couldn't help but relate to the feeling of abandonment. Being alone and forgotten was the engine's worst fear. He spent the whole day thinking about not only the baby, but his driver and his wife. He also thought about what the engines might think of him. He wanted to prove himself, but he didn't know how. When the day's work was done, he decided to ask his driver. It was now or never. Driver? Yes, Diesel? I know that I can often be despicable. Well, I'll admit it. You're actually almost always despicable. Right, but I want you to know that I really trust you and that I don't want what I said yesterday to divide us. I'm sorry for being so miserable. Diesel, in all my years of driving here, I don't think I've ever met a more cynical spirit. But that may have just been the most affecting thing you've said to me. And if it really means that much to you, I will see if the messes can allow me to bring the little tyke. I take it she was more than cross with me. <laughs> oh, Diesel, she even wonders how I convinced myself to leave home in the morning. I thought and struck Diesel. Why do you then? Diesel, if you have the capabilities of being the nastiest engine on the railway, and surely you have the same capabilities to redeem yourself. I'll see you tomorrow. Diesel had never thought of it like that. And that statement clung to Diesel for a long time. The next day, Diesel was waiting anxiously for his driver. He had woken up early and was nervous to see if his driver had kept his promise. Soon enough, he could see his driver walking up to him, and in his arms was the baby. He was beginning to doubt himself. Perhaps this wasn't a good idea. Well, there he is. The baby's innocent face made Diesel all the more worried. He began trembling just at the idea of making the mistake of losing more trust. His driver could see this. Calm down, boy. Just be yourself. He won't talk back, but he knows what you're saying. But... Uh, um. Diesel was nervous, but his driver helped him. He told stories about his adventures on the mainland and how he stood up to nasty Diesels. Even nastier than he was. But despite his greasiness, he felt more than pure with the pure child in front of him. Over the next few days, Diesel's work and attitude improved. His driver would help him, and he'd bear the patience to listen. The other engines were almost suspicious seeing Diesel in such a state. But Diesel was confident now that he could be trusted and ought to show the fat controller how useful he was. But I shouldn't say any more, or I shall spoil another story.
It had been a couple of weeks since Diesel's attitude had improved. He continued to do his work swimmingly with haste and hustle. The fat controller was impressed, but kept his distance in case he thought this was just a man. Other engines felt the same, but the big engines still had their suspicion. Especially James. Him and his cardness, it's uncanny. There's something brewing with him, I know it. It's happened before and it's bound to happen again. Wouldn't you agree, Gordon? It's diesel, what do you expect? <laughs> Those diesels, they just never learn. It, no offense, Bear. Sure, said Bear. And the fact controller still keeps it, Henry proclaimed. And I do say, I personally think we should go to the old times. Until he leaves, we go on strike. Gordon, it's not that bad, said Henry. Personally, I thought that you would have moved on from primitive constructs, retorted Bear. Besides, have you seen how much work he's been doing in the yard? You have to admire how much he gets done within that short period of time, and how much time he saves with other trains. Bear, bear, bear. A shunter's job is a primitive construct. It's in the name, shunt the trucks. It's nothing to think about, so he's right where he belongs. What about the express? Other than strength, you just need to pull the coaches across the island. Strength, speed, and efficiency, mind you, declared a defensive Gordon. I need to keep to my timetable, and if the express doesn't run, the island doesn't run. The passenger service, yes. We still have lots of goods, however. But to you, again, it's nothing to think about. So I guess you are right. It's not like everyone else has their own duties. Also, the express gang, come on, child's play that is. Bear took to his berth and closed his eyes to sleep. We'll see said James. It'll happen again. Yeah, said Gordon, subsided now. But Henry was left contemplating. When the next day came, Diesel was exhausted and deep in his sleep. He had been working hard preparing the trains for the engines. This included Henry's heavy goods, Bears Limited, and Gordon's Express. He had been back and forth, going over points, double, even triple checking the trucks, being careful with the coaches, anything in his power, to make the trains as ready and as efficient as possible. And when Henry arrived for his assignment, he was left in astonishment how neat and set everything was. My goodness, some work you've done, Diesel. Henry confided, but he said it to himself. James had arrived at the yards. As much work as Diesel had put in, he was so focused on the other trains that he hadn't had time to prepare James's train in advance. And James was not happy about that. Why am I not surprised? He muttered. No! Uh. Oh, good morning, James, he groaned. Where's my train? declared James indignantly. Your train? Oh. oh, that's right. I'm sorry, I was preoccupied and I had forgotten about it. Forgotten? It's not much for you to remember. It's not even that special of a job for you or me. I've got dirty vans to pull, which I don't even want to pull in the first place. And now I have to deal with Mr. Greasy Gears. I'm sorry. If you just give me a little time... Why didn't you have it done already? And still the fucking controller has you stay here. You diesels just can't be trusted, can you? You're built for this one job and you can't even do it. <laughs> what a shame. You know, you're even worse than a shelter. You won't even be passed, just left. 
please all remain calm. Well, if you were to just give me some time, I will put your train together. See? Here comes my driver now. Morning, boys. <sighs> Nothing like having a three-hour nap and calling it sleep. That makes both of us. Hello? Hello? It didn't phase any of you last night that I had a train to deliver this morning. Blimey, I had to think that you weren't just some old greasy tea kettle. Good grief, surely you don't mean that. Oh, see, I do, driver. Because if I didn't, I would have said far worse things. Is it that time of the month for you? Oh, of course, what am I saying? It obviously is. I guess that's what you get for being red. Diesel stifled his laughter. James's steam pressure shot up. Right, and I guess that's what you get for working with him, yeah? You're just the same, gross and miserable. Now it was Diesel's turn to talk about. Oi, how dare you talk to my driver like that, you rusty red scrap iron. I'm sorry that I have to use that term, but I will not have my driver be disrespected. Are you sorry? Gordon said. Because frankly, I don't think you would have used such an old insult. So you haven't changed. What are you doing here? I tried doing the strike, but the fat controller said I wouldn't be doing it. As punishment, he said that I would shunt the coaches myself, but I take it that Diesel here hasn't learned from his previous mistake. If you were to easily use your eyes, you would see that I already shunted your coaches over there. It's ready for you regardless. I will gladly shunt your train, but do not treat me as a means. You aren't the fat controller. He was the one who punished you, and he punished me. Yeah, he did punish you, and now he ought to have you sent away asserted James. Diesel seethed and spluttered to a start. Now, even though he didn't want to admit it, Gordon was left thinking. And Bear had seen and heard everything. That diesel, I was delayed by 10 minutes to take a train I didn't even want to because he decided to just be exactly who he is. And to think the back controller has seen change in him. All those diesels, I swear. And I bet there's even worse if he's keen over on the mainland. Again, no offense, no. Don't you dare with the no offense. You keep saying that to me and act as if that's exactly what I need to feel when you talk about diesels, or those diesels, as you put it. If you want to label me, I might advise that you keep it to yourself. I don't think... <laughs> no, look who I'm talking to. It's clear that you can't think of anyone but yourself. Neither does he. Gordon, you saw it, right? Heard it, even. I did. See? More than one of us saw what he said. Did he also see that you started it? I didn't start anything. It was his job to start the train for me, and he didn't do it. For you. For you. I'm sorry, since when is Diesel your slave? It, not even your slave, a slave. It's his job to shunt trains for us, but it is not something that is controlled by you. I expect him to have my train ready by the time I get to the yard. That's his job there, and he can't even do that. Even worse is the fact that his behaviour is just passed off onto his driver. James, that was a mere jest. Jest? That was bloody sardonic, that was. I wouldn't be surprised if he had a part in frame and duck. He made us turn against him. Eh, uh, no. You were the ones who turned on Duck first. You three turned on him out of sheer pomposity. You didn't think to ask him. You didn't think. You never think. And also, have you given Diesel a chance to explain himself? No. But how can I? He just vindicates himself over the course of a few weeks for all that he's done over years. And yet you still want to be sceptical. If you want to continue this prejudice of yours... All right, that's enough. Bear, I wouldn't get ahead of myself if I were you. I understand your complaints, but to say that this is out of prejudice is quite absurd. Yeah, that's right. Oh, shut up, James. Bear is right about the majority of what he has said, however. You did start that bicker with Diesel. I was there. You had no right to disparage him like that. I have a feeling that all that work he might have done the night before must have exhausted him. 
It is nice that everything can be ready for us in the yard, but we need to put credit where credit is due. Though I wouldn't call it prejudice, it is intolerance nonetheless. Looking at how you've acted compared to the fat controller regarding Diesel, I say we give him the benefit of the doubt and not hold contempt to him till kingdom come. Albeit, I honestly will need time to see if I can trust him. Uh, but, uh, Gordon... James, this is all you. He shunted my train, and if you think his driver had a part in Duck's framing, then why wouldn't he have been reprimanded? If such people even worked on the island. Oh, I don't know. Your arguments made me tired. Let's get to work, said Diesel's driver, barely on the verge of waking up. Uh, that won't be necessary, said a familiar voice. It was the fat controller. Uh, good morning, sir. It's come to my knowledge that you and your engine uh, need a break. The driver was worried. Sir, if this is about James and being delayed, Joe Fretch, it's your reward. And Rich will admit everything about James, him starting the argument, and most importantly, your work ethic. As punishment for him, I've given him a two week sentence in absurdity. Oh, thank goodness. So, how is your uh, situation with. Uh, how do I put this? Uh, with the little tie. Oh, yes. We were actually able to adopt him yesterday, our little Sydney. <laughs> he's quite the mummy's boy. She thinks he's lovely. Well, good for you, driver. Good for you. However, I'm here to talk about Jizzle. Please ch take no offence to this, but I can't trust him entirely. Well, please acknowledge that we are not surprised, and can I be frank with you, sir? Yes, yes, please do. For him, I'm the only person he can trust, and he doesn't trust you. At the very least, he doesn't know how to trust you. Bear rolled into the yards to find a tired diesel relaxing. He wanted to have a chat with the engine. Good morning, he said with a gentle smile. Uh, hello. What are you doing here? Uh, last night, us engines at the sheds, we got into a rather large argument about, about you. I realized that they never let you have your own voice in there. Can you blame them? Really, can you? Well, you did horrible things to them, and I can't change that. I can't change what I did. That's the worst thing. Once you do something as horrible as that, you can't change it. It's physically impossible, and it, and it sticks with you. The arrogance, selfishness, callousness, and insecurity. How could I be forgiven when after Fergus was almost scrapped? Well, it won't be immediate. I know that. I know it won't be, but how long will it take? What if they don't forgive me? And I just get sent back to the mainland and it's like I never even existed. I was never part of this island. Who can I trust? You can trust me. Really? Sure, sure, just as a start.
Um, where's Bear? Ugh, who cares? Groaned a weary James. I've had too much trucks to shunt to even think about anything else. Oh, it's beneath me. Actually, the fat controller had come to the sheds. We're meant to meet him at the yard. That's me, Gordon, James, and Henry, by his request. And what does Bear want with us? I don't know. But he said it was important. Dire if we didn't go. Dire? I don't think dire is the appropriate term. Why should something on a Sunday be considered dire? The engines soon found out. It wasn't only the three big engines. There were Thomas, Percy, Duck, and Fergus waiting in anticipation. Thank you all for coming, Bear announced. May I ask why you called us all here? And why us, specifically? I came all the way here from Kill Dan. This better be good. Diesel was in the middle of it all. The feeling of all the eyes piercing through him and a knot in his engine made him feel suffocated. Well? I've been wanting to say this recently. I know many of you are not fond of me. I know I have done horrible things to all of you. I isn't that the truth. Let him speak. It isn't a surprise that I'm disdainful in your eyes. That I'm disgraceful, disgusting, despicable. Of course. But please, listen to what I have to say now. I'm sorry. To Percy, I'm sorry for causing trouble at the harbour and sinking the clay. To Thomas, I'm sorry for causing trouble on your branch line. It's actually quite wonderful. To Gordon and James, I'm sorry for losing my temper and also having the trucks say those nasty remarks to you. That also applies to you, Henry, and I'm sorry for the rumour I told about you after Doc left. To Fergus, you are a very useful engine and you didn't deserve to go to the scrapyard. To Doc, it's hard for me to say this, but I'm sorry for framing you when I came here. It was all out of conceit, arrogance, and just a lack of conscience. I didn't bring humility and it nearly cost you your life on this island. But I think I owe you, sir, the biggest apology. I'm sorry for treating your engines as a means just to show off. I realize it was not to display my work ethic, but rather just my selfishness. I never thought about you and your island. I thought about my place on the island and that alone. I never thought about you. Please, sir, please let me be a part of your railway. Please let me show that I'm useful. Please, sir, I'm begging you, let me be a part of your island. I don't want to go back on the mainland, sir. Please. I forgive you, said a voice finally. It was Percy. It might be a shock, but I haven't been given much of your torment like the rest. And if this is what you'll bring from now on, however, I think it's best you stay. Yeah. Yeah, and considering you really feel for being a part of our island, I can't help but care about your feelings. And how can I pass a compliment to my branch line? 
We live and learn, Diesel. I'm glad that you have, and I'm glad that you are. <laughs> and besides, those square wheels is quite the laugh now. I'm surprised you were even able to think of that. <laughs> and the work you've been doing recently has been staggering, sincerely. Thank you.